Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're looking at the Crabtree voltage-operated earth leakage circuit breaker. This was one of the uh, most common types uh, in use in the UK prior to uh, 1981. Uh, this particular one has uh, no covers here, obviously it would have had a plastic cover there and here as well, but uh, that won't actually affect us having a look at it. Uh, the back, uh, unfortunately the screw holes are covered over with some kind of uh, mastic or filler, but uh, hopefully we can remove those. Hopefully this one also works because the other ones we've tried uh, have both been defective in the case of the Chiltern and that uh, old GC model. So we'll open it up and see uh, what we can find inside and hopefully actually get it working. Now this of course will be uh, very similar to the uh, Chiltern example and uh, also quite similar to that GC one, although of course this is a uh, double pole device. I've got the yellow uh, test button there, some of these actually had red test buttons but uh, other than that they're going to be uh, pretty much the same inside. And you can see at the bottom here, we've got these are the uh, line neutral terminals, and in there we've got the two terminals for the earth electrode and the frame connections, one uh, just above the other there. Let's do a different angle there, you can see that they are in fact uh, separate terminals, it's in here and in there. Obviously if these were connected together by an idiot, then the thing wouldn't actually work at all because uh, you've basically shorted out the connections to the coil there. Now the switch on this does work uh, as uh, intended, so uh, no problem with that. And then on top of there we've got the incoming terminals there. Now the back, uh, obviously these are where the screws are, but it's been filled in with some kind of material, uh, some sort of resin or uh, other filler. So hopefully we'll be able to remove those. However, we do have a screw there, so let's have a look inside there first of all. Right, okay, so in here then we've got, uh, looks like the test resistor. So we've got the test resistor here, which will obviously uh, connect via the uh, test switch, which is this part in here. If we press the test button, yep, we can see that part uh, just moving in the bottom there, so disconnecting at the bottom, and then reconnecting onto this top terminal, which of course goes via the uh, test resistor and puts the uh, line voltage across the coil and therefore hopefully tripping the device out. Now with the back open here we can uh, just do a couple of checks. So uh, we just check the value of that uh, resistor in there. So just go in there with the probes and there we've got a value of just what 3.4k or thereabouts. So uh, that doesn't seem entirely unreasonable. And the other thing we check is the uh, coil of course which uh, will be connected between the two terminals here, the E and the F terminals there. So let's just go in and uh, measure that. Right, now that's coming out as a dead short, which uh, certainly isn't uh, what we would want. There's 0.2 ohms, that's probably just the resistance of the uh, test leads. Now, let's see if it uh, is any better when it's turned on, which might be interesting. Right, well there we go, 166, which certainly seems as if we're more likely to be measuring across the coil there. So it may be that when this is in the off position, it's uh, putting a link across the coil internally, which is uh, certainly an interesting idea. Yeah, there we go, so virtually nothing at that uh, position there with it's in the off setting, and that 166 when it's in the on position. Now I'll just put this uh, thing on this board here so it's in the uh, vertical position, which is how it would normally have been installed. And I've got a couple of wires here going to the E and F terminals, and I've just put those over to this uh, power supply here. Now in the uh, GEC video I just used the Variac to put a voltage across the coil, but unfortunately in this case we can't do that, because as we saw uh, when the switch is in the off position, it's basically shorting out these two terminals, and obviously that would short out the mains and uh, cause all kinds of problems. So using this uh, DC power supply, although it's DC it's only a magnetic coil so it shouldn't make a great deal of difference. And of course this is current limited so it won't actually blow up or set on fire when the thing uh, does trip off. So set the current there to 250 milliamps maximum, that should be more than plenty. And uh, obviously we can adjust the voltage which is displayed on this uh, display here. 
Uh, no, there is a decimal point there, so uh, that might not be obvious on the video, depending on what size you're viewing it, but it's company 0 0.01 or 2 at the moment, and that's uh, 250 milliamps. So if we switch on, and uh, this will now display the actual current, and this is the uh, voltage we're applying. So uh, switch to the on position, and hopefully it will trip at some point. This only goes up to 30 volts, but uh, that should be enough, as uh, they normally uh, tripped well below the 50 we had. So, right, well, that's 5, 6, 8, 9, 10 volts. All right, there we go then. So, uh, that tripped out about 12 and a half volts there. Let's just see if that is uh, repeatable. So we turn it on, we should be able to get it to trip straight away by just putting the switch on. And it does, so that seems uh, quite repeatable. Let's go down to, uh, say, 11 volts. And will it go there? It does. So, so clearly in this case it's going to trip well below the uh, 50 volts maximum, so 10 volts it will not. Let's try 10.5. 10.5 it will. Let's dial that back down to say 10.1. Right, did there, but there was a bit of a delay involved, so. Okay, so it's about 10.5 volts if it's uh, turned on directly at that voltage. Uh, if you uh, increase the voltage up, it seems to be a bit higher than that. Comes in at that sort of uh, 12 to 13 sort of area, but uh, in any case, uh, far less than the 50 volts that it was supposed to uh, operate at, so that. Uh, Seems that it does actually work as intended. So, as you see there, it does actually work, so uh, that has to be uh, a win, but uh, obviously the uh, Chilton and that GC one did not, so certainly in terms of uh, reliability, it seems that Crabtree uh, is the winner. Now, let's see if we can just get this open. Uh, so, there seems to be some sort of resin here, which uh, hopefully we can dig out of there. Oh, this does come out uh, quite easily, actually. So. Hopefully we can get to the uh, screws underneath. Oh, yes, it's just a bit of uh, filler or some sort of hard plastic covering over the screw head, so not a problem. Whether it was supposed to crumble quite this easily, it's not clear, but uh, maybe it's dried out with age or something. Right now it appears after much uh, faffing around there that uh, the screw to hold the cover on are this one, this one and that one. Uh, these others uh, presumably would hold uh, various components inside so I've put those back in for now. So it's just those two and that one which uh, secure this front cover. So let's see what we have inside. Notice there's the uh, just the three there which uh, secure that in place. So. Then we have the insides. Now let's clean up this mess uh, and uh, look at this in more detail. Right, so here's the internals of the device. Again, we've got the terminals uh, at the top here, and the uh, corresponding uh, terminals at the bottom there, which would go through uh, what appears to be the contacts in here. Now this is in the off position, so if we move that to the on, as you can see in here, the uh, moving contact there, 
so that will hold in the on position. Now, of course, there's a similar contact over there as well. Just see that moving in the bottom of that. So uh, these simply just go straight through to those at the bottom there. Now, I'm not entirely sure what we've got going on in here. Some kind of uh, hooped metal arrangement there. So. Yeah, so what we've got there is a load of um, U-shaped pieces of metal uh, riveted or pressed through this side uh, panel here. Uh, presumably those are there to extinguish any arc which would form when the contacts were opened or closed. The uh, metal, of course, uh, would absorb any kind of spark there and uh, dissipate the heat uh, quickly so you don't get a huge amount of uh, sparks flashing over. And uh, there's a similar stack over on that side. That could be completely wrong, but it uh, seems a likely conclusion. Uh, look what we hear, this soldered connection is probably what goes down to the test button. In fact, there's the wire, which just goes down there and presumably comes out uh, I guess here on the back. So that's the uh, connection to the line for the uh, testing button. Uh, we seem to have another one here as well both soldered on the uh, side of that card there. Now again, a contact just sort of connecting in with this metal strip and uh, those other bits and pieces there, so it seems reasonable. Now at the bottom here, we've got uh, obviously the test button of which this mechanism is actually on the back, which we saw earlier. Just move these wires aside, and now here this looks like the coil in there, so when it was magnetised it will presumably pull on this bit here. Yes, that's the uh, trip there. So uh, coil is vertical inside this tubular case. Uh, magnetised, it will then pull down on this piece here. And I see how that just trips the uh, switch to the off position. Like that. So it seems fairly sensible. Now what have we got here? This, uh, obviously that's the uh, copper there, which is the uh, contact from the top there, and it seems to go around a coil there, which is a bit difficult to see on the uh, angle there, but uh, that comes up and then is wound around this former, presumably to provide some uh, you know, another magnetic field to uh, pull that down. So, so we know that this trips the device. So the thing is, what does this do? Not a lot. It's obviously designed to pull down for some reason, and there is actually a bar that moves in the back there, so... Yeah, it's not clear whether that's actually broken or not, but uh, it's clearly designed to uh, pull down when a certain amount of current flows here, which uh, only assume would be uh, in sort of an overload type of situation where if the uh, current flowing here exceeds a certain value it will pull this down and then trip again which uh, yes the cover does say 60 amps ol so presumably overload so uh, presumably that would be that uh, magnetic part of it there so the full current would uh, flow via this fairly heavy copper around this coil and of course uh, that's no doubt selected so that if the current exceeds uh, 60 amps as it says there. It would uh, attract this metal piece here and again disconnect the device. But that part of it certainly does not appear to be working for whatever reason. And at the bottom here we've got the, uh, this uh, for some reason is a multi-stranded wire here for the contact to that one. And presumably that will just go up uh, behind all of that and up to the uh, switch contacts inside there. Uh, 
And as we've already seen, there must be some kind of contact uh, arrangement in here which will uh, short across these two. Uh, again, it's not totally clear where that would be, although it might be this thing at the top here. All right, yes, yeah, so as we saw the uh, E and F terminals, this is the E here and the F at the bottom there. Um, those are connected across the coil, which is here in the on position. And then the off position, we saw that those are actually shorted together. And that's done up here, and that's actually what these two black wires are for. And if we look on the side of here, this white uh, strip there, that's the two wires. And as you see, when the switch moves, it will open the contact here. So in the off position, those are actually pressed together. And in the other position, they are spaced apart. See that small gap in there, and then when it trips to the other position, those will spring together. And this is what's basically shorting out the two terminals here. I suppose that could have some benefits in that if it did trip off, then it ensures that the uh, Earth connection is uh, solidly connected through. Bearing in mind, this core is going to have a, say, a couple of hundred ohms resistance, so uh, if it was off, it just presumably ensures that the uh, Earth is sort of directly through to the electrode outside. Other than that, uh, not a huge amount else inside as really expected, so as I say, this does appear to do a current overload as well as a 60 amps rating. Uh, solenoid coil there for the uh, Earth leakage trip. And the rest of it is basically just the uh, switching mechanism with a sort of mechanical latch and a spring to release it into the off position when necessary. So that was a look at the Crabtree voltage operated earth leakage circuit breaker. And unlike that uh, Chilton one and the GEC example, this one does actually work and in theory could still be used, although of course you wouldn't want to for reasons explained in a previous video. And just another point here is on the back there is a screw there. And that doesn't actually come out, but the, the position of it, it appears to go right into the centre of the trip coil. So uh, we presume that's some kind of adjustment for when the thing was manufactured. And therefore by either screwing that in further or removing it, it would uh, adjust the magnetic field strength. And of course, therefore, the uh, voltage at which the device trips. Until next time, thanks for watching.